Hi, welcome to another tale from Surgeon's Hall. This tale concerns John Goodsir, who was the head of our museum in the 1840s. He was a brilliant anatomist, and as anatomists do, he mostly studied dead bodies, but he had seen some patients as a young man. One of, this, one of these patients had a very unusual condition. And every morning, without fail, he vomited a, a large volume, a few litres of a very watery vomit. This vomit smelt slightly of brewing beer and also had a whiff of vinegar. In other words, it smelt of fermentation. John Goodson recognised this, took some of the vomitus and examined it under his microscope. Under the microscope, Goodsir saw that the vomit teemed with a very distinct organism, never previously described, but looked like a tiny parcel tied with string. So he called it sarsena after the pack of belongings that Roman soldiers carried. He treated the man with creosote, which is known to stop fermentation, and the man seemed to be largely cured, and Goodsir published a paper describing the case. Story now cuts to Charles Darwin, perhaps the most famous biologist of his time, some would say the most fa famous biologist of all time. Following his five-year voyage as naturalist on HMS Beagle, he had written The Origin of Species, the book that made him really famous as a revolutionary thinker in biology. While he had become more famous, Darwin had become more sick, and by 1863 was more or less an invalid, suffering from recurrent nausea, retching and vomiting, gut pain, flatulence, headaches and a swimming head. Another of Darwin's symptoms was that he vomited a large volume each day. And having read Goodsir's paper, he recognised the same symptoms in the young man that Goodsir had seen. So he contacted Goodsir. In an exchange of six letters, preserved in the Darwin Correspondence Project, we discussed Darwin's condition and whether it might be sarsena. Goodsir asked Darwin to send him a sample of the vomit, which Darwin did through the post, and Goodsir examined it, but he could find no traces of sarsena, so Darwin's problem wasn't sarsena, infection in his stomach. But in any case, Goodsir recommended he try creosote. So sadly, Darwin went on to experience these severe gastric symptoms for all of his life until he died 20 years later in 1882. Only lately has it been suggested, um, with strong evidence to support the idea, that he suffered from lactose intolerance. This condition was completely unrecognised at the time of Darwin, so it's very tragic that the fact that he took dairy products um, in his diet were causing his symptoms. The records of the home that Darwin had in Kent called Down House are available and indeed if you look at that record they, they cook many meals that contain dairy products. In fact Darwin is very fond of custard so it's very tragic to think that his illness which plagued him really all of his life was caused simply by his diet. John Goodsir died in 1867 after a protracted uh, illness.